friends, welcome back to my channel. Let's do this. It feels so right to be here on a Friday talking about ingredients. Today we are talking about ethyl hexoglycerin. And for the sake of this video, let's abbreviate it to EHG. Because to repeatedly say ethyl hexoglycerin every single time is very cumbersome. And mama has not had enough sleep or coffee to keep saying it over and over again and not stumble in the pronunciation. Now, recently this ingredient came, kind of came under fire, so I thought it would be a great time to jump on here and talk about it. I was already pretty familiar with the ingredient. And number two, my Green Beauty Intel video on phenooxyethanol is still like one of my number one viewed videos for all of 2019. So that tells me people are hungry for information about some of these preservatives. Now, let's get something straight. You can never fully be non-biased. So let me tell you right up front what my, my bias is. My bias is that I think this is a pretty well-researched ingredient and it's pretty safe. However, I don't want to convince you that it's safe. I want to give you information and I want to walk you through my process of how I get to that conclusion so that you can feel confident making a decision for yourself. It does not have to be my decision. It's your decision and I'm just giving you some information. All right, so let's jump into my process. I like to start with a quick internet search. When I usually say that in the first two minutes of the video, I always get people telling me you should use credible sources. Friends, we're going to be using credible sources, but a quick internet search will tell you, is there 10 years of controversy over these ingredients, aka Google parabens, and you're going to automatically see there is a lot of controversy around those ingredients. So that's what I'm saying. I like to start with a quick internet search just to see what pops up. You know, it's kind of like when you meet somebody at the park. You know, you might do a quick internet search just to make sure they're not an axe murderer. Like I said, a quick internet search pops up the EWG as the first number one search result. Click on the link and it will tell you right off the bat, you'll see a green one telling you that the EWG has, has rated it as being fairly safe. Now some quick stats, okay? The EWG is not the end all, it's not the, um, the most scientific always, but it does give us, like I said, those quick stats. It'll tell us what it's used for in skincare products and it will tell us probably some of the high and moderate concerns. Then what I really like the EWG for is when you can go down to where they show their data sources. And if we go down and look at the data sources for EHG, we'll see that the CIR is the number one listed uh, source. The CIR is the Cosmetic Ingredient Review. This is the gold standard for most people as far as ingredient safety. And when I say most people, I'm talking about conventional cosmetic chemists. If we go to the CIR, we see that the report was published in 2013. Now that's pretty important with the CIR because they have some reports that go back to the 80s. Now in the report, it'll give us a clear idea of the function of EHG. It says these ingredients function mostly as surfactants or skin conditioning agents in cosmetics. EHG reportedly inhibits the growth and multiplication of odor causing bacteria and enhances the efficacy of cosmetic preservatives such as phenooxyethanol. Important distinction to already make right off the bat. You won't see this as a sole preservative. It's simply a preservative booster. They're saying you can also use it as a surfactant or a skin conditioning agent. Now, in the report, they're talking about the use concentrations being no greater than 8%. As we go through here, you'll see that uh, we'll talk more about percentages in products. But they, they evaluated one even up to 8% in wash off products. Now there are some concerns if this is being used in an aerosol product. So if you see it in an aerosol sunscreen, you see it in an aerosol deodorant, you might be concerned about breathing in some of those fumes. But that's kind of similar with a lot of aerosol products, right? Let's jump into the toxicology portion. This is where they tell us about the studies that have been done on this ingredient. Now in animal studies, brace yourself, this is painful to hear, they took rats, shaved off a portion of their hair, applied um, EHG directly to the skin, and then observed what happened. They noticed that there were no signs of erythema, or AKA 
redness, no skin irritation. Um, then they go on to talk about human studies. There's, I think, quite a few, maybe five studies that they cite about EHG specifically. They talk about it in skincare products from 0.5 to 1%. Oh, and it was also skincare and makeup. The study participants ranged from 100 people per study to 600 people, and they mostly involved applying the preparation, uh, like in a skincare product, covering it with an occlusive dressing, and then observing. In their observations, they did not notice a significant amount of redness, concern, uh, redness occurring, leading them to believe that in proper preparations with the ingredient, like no greater than 1%, skin irritation is not occurring. Now we've talked about what the CIR says, which is that it says it's safe, essentially, for skin. Let's go to Lotion Crafter, where we can see two different preservatives. We have Yuxo K900, which is benzyl alcohol and EHG. And then we have Yuxo PE9010, which is phenooxyethanol and EHG. If you read the descriptions on Lotion Crafter, which, by the way, Lotion Crafter is where you can buy cosmetic uh, ingredients, okay? They're gonna show you that the recommended use levels are 0.5 to 1% with a maximum use level of 1.1%. They are water and oil soluble, so you might find them in oil-based or water-based products. Now, it says in the information boxes about the ingredients that the addition of the EHG affects the inner facial tension at the cell membrane of microorganisms broad balanced spectrum of effect against bacteria, yeast, mold, and fungi. All right, so here's what we know about it. It's a preservative booster, and we're not seeing it in huge concentrations. You might find a product that uses one of these prepared preservatives at 0.5%. Um, for example, with this one, they're saying it's 90% phenooxyethanol, 10% EHG, so we're talking about 0.5 of this ingredient, and we're talking about 10% of 0.5% of the formula. Like, you don't have to be a math whiz to know that that's a really small amount of this ingredient. Now, one of the main complaints against this ingredient is that it's been linked to contact dermatitis. So just a quick note on contact dermatitis. It can be caused by a lot of things. Mango sap, baking soda, essential oils, a lot of things can cause contact dermatitis. But let's jump into this article specifically. Right off the bat, they tell us some really great information and they say that preservative allergy is one of the main reasons for allergic contact dermatitis caused by cosmetic products. This is absolutely true. Why? Because when you look at the way that preservatives work, it's similar, you know, it kind of in the thinking of antibiotics, meaning that you're taking something to break down things on a cellular level. So it's not outside the realm of possibility that we as cellular beings may be affected by something designed to break down things on a cellular level. Does that make sense? Back to this article, basically what they go on to talk about is how the study was based on one person reporting that they had um, contact dermatitis. You can read through it further, but it's nothing compared to the amount of CIR information that tells us that redness and skin irritation was not occurring. So uh, I just don't put a lot of weight in that when it was all based on one person. Okay, so then really quickly, let's jump into a product that uses it. What is this? But the new, beautiful, just released on October 1st, Josh Rosebrook Hydration Boost Concentrate. We see EHG and radish root ferment in here as the preservatives. So, you know, here's the thing. Here's a brand, Josh Rosebrook, that is known for being impeccably clean. Like, he's only ever been using potassium sorbate, which is a food-based ingredient for his preservatives. And here he is making the choice, the conscious choice, to use EHG in his product probably because it's in such a tiny, tiny, minuscule amount to help boost that radish root ferment. So, anyway, 
I hope I gave you some things to think about. Like I said, I'm not convincing you that this is safe for you. You may use it and get contact dermatitis. Um, and then you'll know you don't want to use that preservative. You know, um, it's really up to you, but I thought I would give you some information on the safety of this ingredient. So thanks for tuning in and I will see you next week. Bye.